I almost see it as like a house with like, you know, like with hoarders almost where you have all these things in your house. That doesn't mean God is not going to show up in the house. Yeah. And that's that's his grace and love. Like he's going to show up in the house. However, because you're hoarding so many things, it may take a bit for him to do what he needs to do through uh, the house oh, because you're hoarding all of that, wow. right? Wow. He's still going to show up. He's still going to he's still going to be That's him. Good. Right? But it Girl. sometimes it just takes a little more <laughs> to to get there and I think to your point about the clean house is like okay, when well, the house is clean, he can easily get in and do, yeah. right? Um Welcome to a Christian podcast. The podcast where we have Christ-centered conversations. I'm your host, Kevin Wilson. All right, so we are out here at Freedom Park. It's July 4th, so if y'all hear any um, craziness or fireworks, that's why. So, matter of fact, y'all introduce yourselves. We're just going to go down the row. I'm Kia. Hi, I'm Jasmine. Hello, everyone. I'm Robin. And I'm Keith. Cool. So, I really didn't have a topic at hand. I did want to discuss this though, like when we first got out here. So it was raining earlier today and normally we're out there somewhere where it's more open. Um, the shelter is never available like ever. Um, and so today it was raining, my gear is all out here. I'm like, I gotta get under something so <laughs> my stuff don't get ruined. So I come out here and these, there's a couple people out here because everybody doing the same thing. And eventually these two people come up and I look over and they have like all these cards. And I was like, the cards look cool. Like when, <laughs> I, when, I, when you first see them, I'm like, they look interesting, like they look fun. Um, and then when I look, I read and I'm like, oh, those are tarot cards and magic cards. Um, if you know anything about that, it's just not of God, just to be straight up. Um, it's a form of witchcraft and so, um, like even when Robin came out, Robin, what you? I don't even remember what you said. You were like, "Yeah, I was like, what kind of game is that? I thought it was like Uno or something." Yeah, it, looked, it, it looked was ready not to Uno. Play. Ready to play? I was. I was about to sit down, pull up a chair, everything. Yeah, <laughs> and and as funny as that is, that's part of the deception of the enemy. It's like it looks mad fun. Like when you look at it, it's, it's colorful, it looks cool. Like it looks like a, a cool game, um, but you know the enemy is crafty and. Why would he make something look demonic? Right. He wouldn't make it look demonic. He's right. going he to make it look nice, like it's fun and harmless. Um, and I was like sitting here, it was me and Keith out here, and I was kind of being prayerful about if I should say anything. You don't want to offend people. I don't want to seem like, oh, I know everything. I'm just going, you know, this this bug is not leaving <laughs> me alone. Um, I don't want to seem like, you know, like I'm being condescending or I'm right, you're wrong type thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just felt led. I, I, I introduced myself and I was like, hey, could you tell me a little bit about what those were? And so, like, if you ever see anybody doing these things and you and you do feel led to speak up about it, um, I went with the approach of acting like I didn't know a whole lot about them, which I, I know a good amount. <laughs> but I just kind of let them tell me what it was so that it didn't seem like I'm like, oh, you know, those are terrible because mm -hmm. so. They told me what it was, and they told me, you know, they've been practicing for a couple months. Like, they're fairly new to it. And I was like, well, you know, I'm a Christian. We're Christians, and um, God doesn't like us to seek answers from other things, other sources other than him. And uh, I kind of broke down an example of, like, him being a father and how if you had children and you told them, I, you know, everything you— you need I have for you if you need any answers you need any advice you need any food anything I got you and then they go down to your neighbor every day asking for answers asking for advice asking for food you'll be like yo I'm your father like why are you why would you not I got you um and so it's the same way um and so I try to do it with love and grace but I just kind of wanted to point out like the deception or the deceptiveness, for our lack of better words, of uh, those kind of things. is We think of witchcraft and we think of like these but evil witches doing spells and stuff. It's not that. It's It seems very like childlike. Yeah. So, Yo, just wanted to get on here and clarify. There are actual witches that do cast spells. That, that That's a thing. But in this specific part, I was just referring to people doing tarot cards and saying that 
doing tarot cards and things like that in itself is not what we typically think of as being a form of witchcraft when in fact it is y'all have any like experience with either doing that stuff or even f having friends or people around you doing that um i do um i think it was about a year ago i actually would reach out to psychics and um look up a bunch of tarot card readings and all of that and so you're saying I wanted to laugh because it's like been there, done that, mm. got out of it. Um, yeah, so I definitely, yeah. So, t yeah, so <laughs> how'd you get into it, if you don't mind sharing? Uh, so basically what was happening was I was in a situationship. <laughs> and so the dude, I really couldn't read his mind, of course. Like I really couldn't understand what was going on. So I was like, to get answers, I'm going to go find some answers which was mm -hmm. crazy enough because at this point I was um, on my path to being submitted to Christ like really really getting into my submission to Christ but it was a lack of patience that started coming up of not knowing not understanding what was going on him not actually telling me anything so I was like all right going on YouTube looking up stuff spending money to reach out to psychics and mediums and stuff and my mom actually had said something about it, which struck the curiosity to mm -hmm. even do it because she had did it before. Um, and so, yeah, and with the experience, it was really weird because I would just, they weren't saying what I wanted them to say. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's not what I want. Is what so, they were saying, was it true? N no, no. They wouldn't give like, actual answers it was like they were always beating around the bush yeah. they needed to know more information and stuff until like one day this it was a guy he gave me an answer that i definitely didn't like was like nah he didn't it's not into you just let it go keep walking on and i was like i don't really like that answer so i'm gonna keep finding some more answers mm. <laughs> but after a while um i could tell like just my spirit could tell i was I knew I was in error, but it started getting to a point where it was like, you're wrong. You know you're wrong. Wow. Chill out. So um, I wasn't telling my mom I was doing it because I knew her reaction to it. And I finally told her because I was like, she's going to get, she's going to be mad. And I told her and she was like, why are you doing that? I mm. just told you not to do that. Um, and what came of that was I walked around for months in fear, like, mm. like, fear y'all like I thought I was seeing stuff everywhere I went um because when I finally said Lord I don't want this I'm denouncing this I'm coming out of this let it go let it let me go like I don't want it no more I went through a spell of fear a season of just like I couldn't sleep I couldn't go anywhere without being scared that something was after me I would walk outside and I like could see I feel like I could see things coming after me mm -hmm. and yeah, then I was like, okay, so I need to come. I really need to break apart from this. Wow. So then that's when, you know, you pull out your anointing oil, go yeah. through the house, you take out everything. I'm like praying like, Lord, what is in here that needs to go? Um, I'm finding just different things that I had because I was really into dream catchers and stuff as well at this point. Mm -hmm. And God's like, get rid of all of that. Um, I had a lot of like Hindu different things. He's like, get rid of all of that. So um then I just kept speaking the word of God over myself, um, saying, Lord, the Lord is my peace over and over again. And then after a while, you know, God just kind of, everything just kind of lifted off of me. And um, peace was restored for real. So, yeah. Yeah. Man. <laughs> I'm like, it's so dope for you to share your story because it, it, it just shows that, like, it's not, like, I think sometimes we think of it as, like, super oh dramatic or like super like um out there especially for like the common christian when we think of like witchcraft we think of something like i could never do that right. i could never end up doing witchcraft but it's like it's so easy like you um in, in your uh lack of patience in that season or like yo i need i need answers immediately um you know the bible you know like wait on the lord like right. wait wait on the lord those that wait on the lord he will renew their strength like so i'm like even go ahead robin what are you about to say i was just gonna say um astrology is kind of the same yeah yeah concept a lot of i know i used to kind of like engage in like looking 
and you know meeting a guy and being like okay how do our signs like match and that's uh, literally yeah. kind of doing the legit it's the same thing yeah like yeah out you, of impatience wanting to see at the beginning like is this going to work or yeah yeah keep you better say something yeah i was gonna say it it i think one of the things that kind of hit on the head um even i think when you were speaking to the to the folks earlier that had the cards was that some of what they may find out may be true yeah 100%. yeah you know what i mean but i think the the great example like you mentioned was like the father so people were like like seeking they're seeking the truth they're seeking spirituality they're mm-hmm. trying to find out you know their future um and and they're seeking something and some things may be camouflaged to be true yeah but it's still not the source you know yeah. what i'm saying and so that's just the thing is like the you know I think it's important as Christians and in the world to know, you know what I'm saying, that some things even may appear to be, you know, yeah, real true. But, you know, like some facts may be, you know, they have witchcraft in, in, the, you know, in the biblical days and all of that stuff, too. And, you know, they, you know, Moses turned, you know what I'm saying, yeah. his rod into a serpent, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then the, the pharaohs was able to do some type of, you know, yeah. but it was God was the source. That's the difference, mm-hmm. I think, is like the source yeah you know, no that's real because yeah. i think a lot of people think like a lot of christians think like none of that stuff has power mm-hmm. at all right but like yeah god god is god yeah and so anything else doesn't have any power exactly. that's not true exactly. right it calls uh, satan the, the the god of this world right go ahead jasmine you were yeah, saying no, i was going to share something similar to that because um when i was living in california actually i had a co-worker who would do that and so I remember at all of our team meetings, they would always be like, um, bring your cards, bring your cards, bring your cards. And so this was like before I was leaving, we were having this dinner and she was doing everyone's readings. And I was like, you know what? Everyone kept kind of like pressuring me, like, get yours done, get yours done. And I thought it was harmless. So I'm like, all right, I'll sit down yeah. and hear what you got to say. Um, and she did them. But I do remember feeling just kind of like, this don't really feel right. Mm-hmm. Um but I felt like even in the reading, it felt similar to horoscopes because I feel like horoscopes are like anyone could fit. It's just like a whole bunch of words that anyone could say, oh, you know what, that kind of aligns. And so with the reading that she gave me, I really don't even remember it word, to word for word, but I remember it just being like, I feel like that could work for anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, but in my eyes, it was kind of like, this is harmless, but I feel like now is like, no, you should have realized the the power in that too. Um, yeah. Yes, you have the Holy Spirit, but there are also other things roaming this earth that you have to be aware of. Yeah, yeah, so. and that's good, and that's why. Like, I mean, God is intentional, even from like I literally, dang, I'm just putting this together. So, I recently stopped praying against like the rain or the weather in general, <laughs> right? Like. <laughs> Oftentimes, I need the rain for the yard, have, bro. <laughs> but look, like when we when we have how you doing? When we have like an event or something to do, we'll say, "God, can you hold the rain?" Or God, can you like? Yeah, we're acknowledging yeah. his his uh, omnipotence, really. Mm-hmm. We're saying, "God, you can do anything. Could you please move on my behalf?" But one thing I realize is like, God is sovereign. Like God is all knowing. If if it's supposed to rain, it's supposed to rain. Mm-hmm. So my prayer is, God, your will be done now. Like if it's supposed to rain, mm-hmm. let it rain. If it's not, because I could be praying against somebody else's blessing. Like it's, it, you know, I'm just thinking like it could be a farmer <laughs> or something that desperately right. needs it to rain right now, and I'm praying, right. Lord, hold the rain. Like he, his life, his whole liveliness is based on it raining right now. I'm praying, nah, just so I could do a podcast. Um, so I prayed that I was like, I said. No, yeah. Bro, I was praying the same thing. No, no, yeah, it's not just a podcast, but yeah. But I, I so I stopped. So even today I'm like looking up at the sky, I'm looking at the forecast, I'm like, dang, this is, this is gonna rain probably. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, your will be done. So I come out here, I'm like halfway over here and it starts raining. So I come over to this shelter that's never available and on July fourth of all days where I thought it would be for sure booked, it's free. And I was like Okay, cool. But I'm still kind of discouraged because at this time it's pouring. Like, it doesn't look like any chance of sun in the next day. So I'm like, ah, dang. So I'm like praying, like, Lord, what do I do? Do I stay? Do I go? Do I just cancel? Do I just be like, we're just going to go home? Like, did I miss Did I miss it? Maybe I wasn't supposed to come out. So, again, that's when they came over. Um, but, like, even in God's sovereignty, like, he would have them come over 
one so that I can speak to them and, and at least give them a, a chance to be accountable. Mm. Um, I didn't slap them on the wrist and say you're wrong, but like I did tell them like this is not based on the Bible. This is not right. right. Um, and then even now, so that we can share our stories and that somebody else can be uh, can be prevent like it could prevent them from doing it because like jasmine said she didn't know and it, it's if you if you don't know ignorance doesn't excuse you from demonic influence wow so it's one thing to not know and that's you know god knows you doesn't god knows you you didn't know so he's not like why are you doing that but it doesn't excuse you from the demonic attacks that you go through. Even like Kia shared, like you open yourself up to demonic portals and, and uh, demonic spirits. And so, um, you know, God's deliverance is his deliverance. So like that's, that's above anything. But still, why go through that if you can just do a podcast here? Oh, th this stuff is demonic. So, right. Robin, you better say something. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, so what do you say to a person who does have a lot of questions and let's say they do know God and they are like struggling, like with waiting to hear from him? Um, because I know like an easy scapegoat, even with that, is to like go to other people, you know, when God says, wait on me. So like, what do you yeah. say to a person who's like waiting or wanting to learn how to be patient and wait? For God to answer those questions mm. That's a good question I think you, you have to start with trust Because it ultimately comes down to a trust issue um, My earthly father um, Sometimes When we would get in the car I would ask where, where are we going Like where are we going And like sometimes he'd be like don't worry about it Like just drive like just ride And I'd just be like alright Like I still wanted to know <laughs> But it was a trust I had, like, he's not going to take me nowhere crazy. He's not going, he's not taking me to harm me or to sell me or, like, anything crazy. Um, so I'm good. And so it's that same thing of, like, I might not have the answer I want right now, but, like, if I trust you, Lord, your, your, whatever your plan is, is going to, um, and I'm submitted to you, whatever your plan and your will for me is will come to pass. And so I think um, that and just increasing in patience, you know, patience is a, um, a fruit of the spirit And you have gifts of the spirit Fruit of the spirit Gifts are given Fruit is cultivated So like You have to earn patience You, you don't just wake up with, with patience You have to pray for more patience You have to And when you pray for patience You should expect a situation That requires patience it's, it, mm. it sounds backwards But it's All like right. yeah. How can I get patience Without having to be patient Right um, So yeah just, trust, just begin to trust in the Lord And if you don't trust Um like the man said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Mm -hmm. Help me in my unbelief. Help me. God, I'm I'm getting impatient. Because the thing is, he already knows. So for you to not tell him is like, son, I know you're impatient right now. I know you don't trust me. You know, you, you not saying it isn't going to make it less, you, you less trusting of him. So, yeah. Kia, did you have anything? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I once heard someone say, um, while you're waiting, look for work. So, and that helped me a lot because I'm always praying, Lord, help me with my patience. And, of course, I find myself being tested in patience and he's working on my patience. Um, but I've had to learn to keep moving a lot, like to keep doing what he's already told me to do. If he told me to work on this one thing, work on that thing until he gives me the next thing or work on that thing until he tells me what the answer is or um, you want you're waiting for his answer. Go to his word. Look in his word. Read his Bible. Um, read what he has to say in the word Keep going back But don't stop Like just keep moving That's And good. he can give you your answer In the midst of whatever you're doing As long as you're just submitted to him anyway He'll give you your answer So I've had to learn to just keep pushing And just keep moving Because we, I feel like we all experience moments Where it's like Lord where's my answer Like are you going to tell me today or Tomorrow when And I've just had to submit to like He can tell me when he wants to tell me I, He doesn't have to tell me today So just look for work Whatever that looks like Do what he's told you to do Find the next thing That he's told you to do already That's And good. just keep moving Yeah Bill Johnson talks about A lot about stewardship Like even Even stewardship of Of God's word So Even if You know the uh, Like If I'm God And I gave you a word You didn't listen to it 
would it be wise of me to give you another word so you cannot listen to that one? So sometimes he said, God doesn't doesn't speak because he's already given, he's already spoken and we didn't listen. So sometimes you might have to backtrack and be like, what did he say to me that I didn't listen? Mm Because what kind of wise God would keep giving you more information knowing that you're not going to use it and that you haven't used what he already told you? That's not, that's not a good steward of words. So um, that was good. Keep like, keep working, keep finding what it is. And the word is also, that's the best thing you can do is find it in the word. Yo, what up, y'all? What up? Um, yeah. Any other thoughts? Uh, not to go back too far, but just on the thing of like the 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 cars and people seeking for stuff. I think like I think the difference is too is like it's really like a plan of the enemy, and not just with like you know mm-hmm. um, witchcraft, like desires. Like think about it. You know, it could be anything like that that feels good. Yeah. Right, you know yeah. what I'm saying. It, it, the end, of the plan of the enemy ultimately is just, just to to take you away yeah. <laughs> from God. Steal, like, kill, you know what I'm destroy. saying? Steal, kill, and destroy. You know, to have you, you know, like the prodigal son, pleasure, have it all, and then just kill you. So yeah, that just just a yeah, quick thought good. on that. So, mm-hmm. Kia, you about to say something? I don't know what I was about to say. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like, and then for somebody watching this, like, or listening that they're like dang i'm doing this stuff now or i've done it before and like i could i could i could feel i could feel like the fear of like rising like oh gosh what have i done Mm -hmm. like what i open myself up to um god is a deliverer Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so there's a process and deliverance comes in multiple ways like there's a process of getting in the word right there's a process of prayer there's a process of admitting confessing your sins repenting turning away um and there's also a, a process of um deliverance that like physical deliverance where when we open ourselves up to demonic spirits they have to come out right? right and so um seek like your local church um there's different ministries that actually work heavily in deliverance and the, the ministry of deliverance and um, if you feel like man i i have stuff that I mean, I feel like I'm in bondage or even like Kia shared, like I would just see stuff and I would feel like demonically attacked. Like, appreciate you. oh, that was on me. Oh, appreciate you, big dog. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, <laughs> big old root. I was like, what's going on? Appreciate you, man. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. A roach on me talking while I'm talking about deliverance. Um, <laughs> 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 He tried to stop me. Nah, <laughs> but for real, like, if, if you might, like, need deliverance, um, and so seek, like, a, a deliverance ministry. Isaiah Saldivar, um, if you go to his website, I don't know what it is, but just type in Isaiah Saldivar. He has a deliverance map where he has trusted deliverance uh, ministers all throughout the world. And so you go in, you type in your address, and you can find the closest uh, ministers to you that can actually pray for you. Um, because at the end of the day, like we wrestle not against flesh and blood, and so we can't acknowledge the angelic realm and angels and not acknowledge demons. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Right. I was gonna add to that because I left out the fact that not only was I like experiencing what I was experiencing, but I also was convinced that God was gonna take me out. I walked around convinced that God hated me and uh, He was mad at me and He was just gonna smite me like. I thought lightning would have struck me at any moment because of what I did. Wow. And that was really hard to shake. I had to just keep reminding myself, nah, that's not the God I serve. To be like that, he forgives me. I've gone to him for um, forgiveness, but I did walk around for a moment thinking God was like, nah, I hate you. This ain't it because you messed up. You got out of my will. So it was interesting that you brought that Dang, up. Dang, <laughs> now that's good for you to share because I didn't even think about that's condemnation. Yeah, it, it, mm-hmm. and there's a difference between conviction and condemnation. Right. Like, conviction is when you're like, "I'm better than this." Right. Like, I'm better than the sin I just committed, and I I shouldn't have done that. But I know at the end of the day, God still loves me, and that His forgiveness is still for me. Condemnation is when you find yourself hiding from God. You find you feel like God is like disappointed in you. You feel like 
you you let God down as if he didn't already know what you were going to do. Um, but it's it's a that's where shame comes in. That's where distance from God cuz I mean, I've been I've been through that where it's like you find yourself hide, hiding from God. Like just like Adam and right. Eve in the garden like right. as if we could hide from <laughs> as if we right. could actually hide from God. We're right. trying to we're separating ourselves because we feel we don't feel worthy. Um ooh, which is which is actually like a works based a works wow. based relationship right. because we feel like the better we do the closer we can be right. the further we are we got our the the more we sin I, I need to get far away from god when in actuality the, the more in sin you are the closer you need to be mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. the more injured you are the closer to a hospital you need to be right. The, right. The, the sicker you are yeah. you, you know right yeah you got covid and you on your and you trying to say like ah maybe i should get better and then i fell I'll go. into that yeah yeah i yeah. fell into thinking if i kept doing more god would forgive me for what i just did so i would start going through the list like let me cut this out let me cut this out mm. cut this out and ultimately what happened was you you hit a wall and you yeah. fall because of why you were even doing that in the first place you weren't you were doing it to earn his love. You were doing it out of your own strength to Dang. get the forgiveness you're trying to get. See, and I hit a wall and fell right back into the things he was trying to deliver me from anyway. Just from that moment in the first place, had I just did what I was supposed to in the first place, all of that could have been avoided. Mm-hmm. And then ultimately it made me feel like I got set back for a moment because I was on this path and I made one wrong turn. And then here I am backtracking because of this wrong term and thinking that my God would make me earn his love again. Mm. So, yeah, you get in. Yeah, that's real. Because when, when we do say we do feel like I went backwards. Yes. Like I got further from God as if he's not omnipresent. Right. As if he's not like Emmanuel, God right. with us. Like we think that our sin. Now, let's not be wrong. Like. God is perfect right Mm -hmm. and so i'm trying to carefully articulate this like where his spirit is right he wants to be a clean place right he we're supposed to be vessels pure and holy right Right. um who can ascend the hill of the lord only those with clean hands and pure heart right like that's scripture um so there is a certain level of purity required for a certain level of intimacy mm-hmm. um it's the it's, a, it's the reason why why moses was was able to go on the hill with the lord it is a certain level of like everybody couldn't do that right. um but it's not if i sin i have to be far away from god if i sin, he's gonna take he's he's gonna depart from me like it's not that but it is a level of honor and respect that we have for god and in, in the purity of him and his spirit that's like god i don't want to be a i don't want to be like i wouldn't invite how do i say this like when you when you have visitors over mm-hmm. you clean your house up right you and you clean it even extra than a, than the average day yeah. it's that same thing of like god I have such a respect and honor for you that I want to. I want my house to be clean. Right mm-hmm. now, if it is clean, I understand that you're God and that you. you there's grace, but I, I honor you that much that I want this to be the best place possible for you to live. Right. So yeah. that's good. And I, I would just add, like, like you know, like the Bible says, it's like you know, where if you make your place in hell, like I'm there. Like he, yeah. he's always like he's always there, no matter. If you did like a little sin or a big sin or whatever, like he's like always there. Yeah. I just think that like with sin, it creates blockage. And so that's why that pure yeah. purity is for us. And so we can be, you know, we don't we don't we have that knowledge and we remove that blockage and trying to get close back to him. Like because if you have blockage, you feel ashamed and X, Y, Z, you know, then you may not even feel like you you're you're cl- good enough worthy enough to be close to god and so i think like you know to your point when you're you know your clean hands pure heart it's like you know wow you 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 have knowledge and closeness to him for yourself not for god you know what i'm saying so yeah that's real yeah. i want to 
when y'all are speaking, I'm laughing because I, I was literally about to say, Jasmine, you go have to, you go say the last thing and <laughs> oh, we go wrap up. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, what I see when y'all are saying that, going back to the house analogy, I almost see it as like a house with like you know like with hoarders almost where you have all these things in your house that doesn't mean god is not going to show up in the house yeah. and that's that's his grace and love like he's going to show up in the house that's good. That's however good. because you're hoarding so many things it may take a bit for him to do what he needs to do through uh, the house dang. because you're hoarding all of that wow. right wow. he's still going to show up he's still going to He's still gonna be it him, good. right? Yeah. But it Girl. sometimes it just takes a little more <laughs> to to get there. And I think to your point about the clean house, it's like okay, well the house is clean, he can easily get in and do yeah. right. Um, and so I just kind of saw that when y'all were speaking That's, on wow. the the house. That's so he's good. already there. It's hard for you to find him because you hoarding right. so much stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. That's okay. right. And it's less space for him to dwell because yeah. you got so much extra stuff. <laughs> right. Ooh. Nice. All right, that's why, but like that. That's good. Okay, Jesus. this is the last thing I'm gonna say. We gonna rap for real. <laughs> the 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 Bible says in Acts chapter. How do I want to say this? Don't forsake the. How do I want to articulate? Acts chapter two. It talks mm-hmm. about the fellowship of the believers, right? And it talks about how they ate together. They uh, gave everything to the needy, and they had everything in common. Mm-hmm. So every day they would meet, and they would talk, and they would pray, and they would live. And so um, it's important that we don't forsake community, right? The, we don't uh, forsake the, the gathering of the brethren, right, is what the Bible says. I can't remember the scripture. Um, because having a conversation like this, I can say one thing, and I just have what I have in my mind. Kia can share her experience. She has what, like, we all just have a piece of the puzzle that, like, even with the whole house thing, I had that one piece. I wasn't thinking about it from the aspect of what Jasmine shared. And so when you talk to people that have similar mindsets and, and values and beliefs, there's a there's a extra level of God's presence that can come in and give you revelation and give you like that extra wisdom that you just don't get by yourself so yeah anybody got any parting words or any like word get keith go ahead give us a word of encouragement to leave it to to in the episode (laughs) a word of encouragement uh i would just say hey you know there's therefore no condemnation to those which are in christ jesus and um you know in christ jesus that's the key like (laughs) because of him and his blood and his grace like no matter what you've done no matter what you believed in, witchcraft, X, Y, Z, it's like, it's not because of you, but it's because of his grace. Like, we can all be free. So yeah. that's, that's it. it. Yeah. Appreciate y'all for listening. Peace. Hey, that was good, yo. <laughs> Hello, people. <laughs>